thanks to all of you for joining us today we are having mr pravin kumar putsuman with us he is a full stack developer he is a react expert and he is studied from university of leicester london and uh, he's a working professional now he's a full stack developer right so uh, let's start this session so uh, i also would like to welcome our seat post internship uh, and all the students those who uh, did a great job and uh, land into the their post internship program thank you thank you all of you for joining us today so pravin it's uh, hand over to you now you can take it over thank you thank you yash hey hi everyone hope everyone is good in this uh, crazy lockdown situation and uh, how is everyone right now so uh, hope everyone is doing good and uh, yeah so today we will be looking at how we can build an awesome api uh, you know like the api stack and other things using node js and other um, other latest technology and uh, i'll also have a uh, so uh, yash should i be looking at the chat or is it going to be like um, uh, will you be calling out if there is any questions or coming coming up uh, something i will be calling it if there will be any question i will be calling it okay. excellent excellent so let's let's go on go on to that so um so we all know that node js is a javascript runtime environment that runs server side and within that environment we can use javascript to build our software our rest apis and invoke external services etc so today what we are going to do is we are going to try creating like let's let's go quickly about a few things about node js as a programming language or like a javascript language and then we will be uh, looking into what exactly is uh node js how we will be working on those things and that's the first thing and before that i wanted to know how many of you are familiar with node js and how many of you know that there is node js but i don't know anything in that so do you want to do you uh, want to put that in your comments please and yeah so uh without any further uh, uh further any uh, delay let's crack on with the whole thing so uh yes so with respect to node js first thing is node js is developed by the javascript working group uh, the main person is ryan dial and uh, it's also um uh, good to know that the person who created javascript brendan ake are also a part of it but it's mainly created by ryan dial and uh, we will be using um node js not only so since we have been using you no know, javascript on the client side and it it is one of the most popular languages for a lot of people what what some people did was why not we run the same application on the server side which kind of like makes it in a better way like you know um the same language which you have been working so long in your client side application why can't you make it as a full stack application that's when node js came in and then not only that nowadays there are like loads and loads of frameworks like mean stack mern stack etc so the m stands for mongodb mongodb is a document database which is written in uh, maybe it is written in c c++ but the way that we will be interacting with mongodb and uh, um the programming thing that we will uh, programming interface that we use is javascript so literally mongodb is also a js so the mern stack where e stands for express js it is like the framework of the server node js you know it is the runtime environment which runs everything and whether it is mean or mern it is going to be either angular or react both are javascript technologies so we will be looking at a lot of like you know all the four four stacks like you know the three tier architecture is going to be a, a javascript language so it's a single language you just need to learn one single language which is the top second because number 1 seems to be python and the number 2 seems to be javascript and then we don't care about what is third and fourth and etc uh, personally i don't so yeah so since javascript comes in the top two languages why not learn javascript and become a full stack developer that's the motive of the whole um, you know that's that's the personal thing personal suggestion that i generally give to a lot of people and apart from that um yeah so how many of you have uh, so we, do we have the results yeah okay i'll have a quick look at it so a lot of people say that it's your beginners and uh, not much familiarity with uh, the language as such and uh, um 
yeah so that's i'm just looking at the whole no js helps in websites and other things okay there are like loads and nice good questions as well so yeah so um that looks good all right so uh, how node js web helps in website as like see node js runs on the server side right so in the server side you can either have some kind of a um web application or like a, a software what exactly is a server first we will try to understand that so when you consider a server software it's going to be a, an application software that runs on a particular port it's going to listen on a particular port and then uh, you will be uh, getting the information from like it it will keep on listening on one particular um trying to get an information for, from one particular port and then the moment you get a you give a request so the most common requests i could say is get put patch and delete so uh, sorry get put post and delete and patch as well so these are common http verbs so when when these things happen uh, the software the server side software will try to understand that okay there is a get request coming in and then it will send you a send then response out there so you can also use node js to host static websites and uh, main the best best part about node js is it is very good in making uh, a dynamic you know like an api site so that's that's one thing node js is really good at and that's what we will be looking at in detail and uh, looking at the other thing okay so atul has given the best question so difference between node js and php right node js and php i haven't uh, uh, i don't think there is much difference between them uh, one thing is um, node js is single threaded while php i'm not sure if it is it is actually thread safe but uh, i don't think it's uh, single threaded or multi threaded uh, but it it mostly now nowadays it is becoming multi threaded and also node js nowadays supports uh, classes and other things so i believe it's uh, going to be a, a really a tough uh, competition between node js and php because nowadays no one in general in the commercial area uses php nowadays and uh, apart from that yes dino is one of the languages uh, created by one of the node js creator uh, it is upcoming which which claims that it's going to solve a lot of issues which is existing in node js but still it is actually inviting a lot of trouble at the moment that's what is my personal opinion and uh, right uh, so so that's that's a few things uh, i would like to say uh, with respect to security um, see when when you con uh, when you consider security one thing is um, node js is fairly new right so php has been there for more than 10 years while node js has been there only for a couple of years and when it comes to security again that's going to be like a, a really a big game you know it's like a game changer so today there is something whatever that was there like previously might not be present now and whatever threats that might come in the future maybe node js can be can uh, tackle it better than maybe java as well like java has been there for years right like it is very good in the security standards and other things and uh, looking at that kind of a scenario uh, we can't really tell anything about uh the security aspect of both node js or comparing it with uh, any other language so there is something called as owasp top 10 okay it is open web application security project and that one actually gives you a few the top 10 vulnerabilities that needs to be patched in any of the web applications so that is one thing which you should be mainly focusing on to cover everything and that's that's something which we should be looking at uh and uh, apart from that uh, with respect to any kind of like you know um, frameworks and other things i believe uh, express js is one of the good frameworks that go with node js which um, and we are, we will be using express js now we will be using routing and modular routing etc to construct a simple web you know like a what do you call this simple api server 
like a small hello world or like maybe a to-do list without a database. Let's not concentrate anything on the database side, but we will be using some data and we will also do a lot of session management, etc. today. So let's see how we are working on those kind of things. Um, and uh, yes, when it comes to JavaScript, as I already told you before, change is the only thing that doesn't change. This will be like very apt for JavaScript. So whenever you learn something new today, as whatever you learned till yesterday or whatever you finished learning today will be obsolete. So that way, um, a lot of things are changing a lot. So in JavaScript, you can't stick with one single framework. So there is like hundreds of frameworks getting developed each and every week or each and every month, if not week. So um, to that level, JavaScript is changing. So you don't need to learn everything to become a full stack developer. So what is a full stack developer? So whatever you know in the back end, something like when you take a two tier architecture or a three tier architecture, you have the first tier is the presentation tier view where you will be able to see what exactly is um, on the screen. Like, you know, the look and feel is the view. So that is the presentation layer, then the application logic layer. So the application logic layer is the where is the place where it's gonna collect the request, process it, do something and then gives you an output, right? So that is the application layer. And the final layer is the database layer. That's what application layer talks to. So uh, these are the three tier architectures. And in these three tiers, presentation layer, either Angular or React, so that's a JavaScript. Um, we are using Node.js and Express.js in the business layer, JavaScript. And then finally, MongoDB in the data tier, that's a JavaScript. So um, if you know the basic concepts, whether it is JavaScript or PHP or .NET or any other language for that reason, you will become a full stack developer. So um, that is the that's the answer for full stack developer that I would say. And uh, apart from that, uh, let me have a quick look at other questions. Okay, um, I'm not sure about the lack of library support and uh, Node.js being instable, which is uh, kind of surprising for me because uh, I have seen that Node.js has been given the like the the best. You know, it uses something called as asynchronous I/O, which means uh, uh, the input and output is like completely asynchronous and it doesn't. It is actually non-blocking for the. Uh, Node.js JavaScript was. Whereas in case of PHP, it is kind of like blocking IO. So that alone is one of the good things about Node.js, which makes it stand out uh, ahead of other platforms. And moreover, it is not about the programming language that provides all these things because when we are architecting a complete system, we can uh, do something like, you know, the load balancers, master slave. Uh, methodologies, etc. And then those kind of things will help us in getting the best out of the language. It's irrespective of the language. You can, if you get the architecture perfect, you'll be able to get it really nice. So that's that's one thing which I wanted to say. And uh, sorry, Janil, I have no clue about Next.js and I would really love to have a look at it. But uh, other than that, yes, Node.js is really rocking. And uh, Right, so uh, all these things are all these questions. Um, so Shashidhar, so all these things which I'm telling is from my own way and I'm looking at the questions that's been asked and then I'm responding there. So uh, nothing is uh, nothing is something like I'm having a, I have prepared a notes or something like that, but um, obviously it's, uh, yeah. Um, anyway, you have the recording like this, this is available on YouTube, so you can anyway, anytime you can have a look at it. Right, so that's that's a quick introduction about Node.js and uh, what else uh, we will be using. Uh, uh, like, so one thing which I was talking about is Node.js is like, you know, it's a modular thing. So generally, if we want to include um, other uh, um, pages or like other modules, in generally in react we use the import but here we will be using something called as a require so require is something that was already existing there are multiple types of importing uh, you know javascript uh, modules in a page uh, but node.js uses the common um, it's common JS importing, which is called as require. So we use something called require, uh, require, and we'll 
get the file name. That's how we will be importing. I'll be showing you something uh, uh, on this. Then uh, we will be using. Let's let's try to um, run something like a um, like a basic API uh, API code right now. So generally there is something called as an express generator. So what we what they do do is uh, express generator kind of like you know it scaffolds the whole fresh up express application which has all the details but we are not going to go through that because that is kind of like there is no point in doing that because you won't learn anything in that so we'll be trying to use uh, um, a normal express js application and uh, let's let's try to work on that okay um, there are a few things uh, from okay, there is one more question. So, what is the difference between Express JS and Node JS? So, as I said, you Express JS is a framework. It's a JavaScript framework, and uh, it is written on top of JavaScript. So, Node JS is the runtime environment. So, how we have an Apache server? Let's say, let's try to imagine this as a LAMP stack. So, in LAMP stack, what we have got is uh, we would have a Linux as the complete box. So, the Linux is the basically it is the um, what do you call this? It is the operating system. So let's let's leave that aside. So we have Apache, MySQL, and PHP. MySQL and MongoDB both are database servers. Let's keep it aside. So now comes the PHP and Apache. It is the same thing with Express and Node.js. So Node.js is the main frame, uh, main uh, runtime environment which is gonna run the JavaScript application while. Um, while Express.js is the framework which helps you like, you know, you know that JavaScript is the thing that runs the JavaScript. So JavaScript engine is the one which in, which is the, which is running the whole JavaScript in the browser. Similar to that, how many of you have heard of jQuery? So jQuery, what does it do? It helps you in doing a lot of things in a simple three liner or one liner, right? It is the similar thing. So how jQuery is to JavaScript, it is the same thing as Express is to Node.js. So Express is also JavaScript, Node is also JavaScript. Node is the JavaScript runtime, while Express is a helper, kind of like it helps you in a, it's a HTTP server framework, and it helps you to host web servers. That is what is the difference between. It's not exactly a difference because you can't compare apples and oranges. Both are fruits. So it's just like both are JavaScript framework. So something like that. So Express is written on top of Node.js and uh, it is mainly helpful for running modular, uh, routable, um, dynamic web applications and APIs. So that's, that's exactly what we will be looking into today. That's one more thing as well. So let me quickly check the questions in uh, YouTube as well. Okay, a lot of people are asking this question, how should we become a developer? The first thing is first understand what exactly you want to do. So my passion is lying in JavaScript. There are hundreds of languages here. Okay, so if you go to Stack Overflow and open the tags or something like that, you can see what are all the top languages. The top languages are Python, JavaScript, .NET, Java, um, C sharp, like C sharp comes in dot, dot net, Rust, Flutter. Like if you want to become a mobile application developer, there is some more things. And I really want to show you something. So when someone is asking, how should I become a developer? I always tell people to have a look at this website called roadmap.sh. And these are all developer roadmaps. And what you need to do is you, if you want to become a front end developer, go here. If you want to become a backend developer, go here. If you want to become a full stack developer, they say this is an upcoming thing, but still you can actually combine these two and uh, consider that as a full stack, right? So full stack is nothing but combination of backend and front end. So if you go to the front end, you need to know the basics of like, you know, how, so there is this blue tick that is one of the best things, okay? So they use that and then try to follow everything. So the main thing that you need to know is what exactly is an internet, how it works and stuff like that. Then the front end comprises of the major three things, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And then uh, you have got uh, version control systems. That is one of the main things uh, because in version control systems, whatever happens, like it's like a time machine for your code. So you can go back in time and forth, back and forth in time and stuff like that. Uh, so that includes the Git usage and the other thing. Git is one of the major uh, 
version control systems then you need to know something about the web security even though you are working on the front end there is a chance that you might mess up with the web security so always make sure you have a quick good knowledge a small good knowledge about web security then comes the package manager so we have got some package managers like node and for for node one is npm and uh, yarn npm stands for node package manager and yarn is i guess it's yet another something but yarn is by facebook so that's the difference literally and uh, there are like some css architectures then css preprocessor i believe a couple of people who would have uh, learned about something called a css preprocessor sas yes css etc so that's something which comes then comes the build tools which are like something they they kind of like you know minify the javascript compress the javascript and then deploy it so that's one thing then you can either pick a framework like react js and uh, redux in turn what it does is like the state management part and then you can also go with some modern css like you know um with that is that is with react js like either css modules or style components or something like that then finally you go with web components this is one of the um, upcoming trends right now so it is what does that do it is going to create components in html itself so um instead of putting the normal div and other things you will be learning something like you will be putting your own own um tags and stuff like that so that's that's something really cool and then we have a lot of css frameworks where uh, bootstrap comes as the first one obviously uh, a lot of people like bootstrap because of its uh, um, a lot of people have been using for a long time and it is very easy to pick it up and uh, we we can work on it then finally we have got uh, a huge um, you know like the the after side of the front end so this these all things constitute a front end developer so to become a front end developer it is not required to do everything but at least 80% of this roadmap will be a good way to go and for back end that is what our main concentration today and it's going to be like you obviously basically you need to know the basics of internet and basics of the front end knowledge then main thing is the operating system and uh, some more generic knowledge about the operating system how it works and stuff like that so um you come to know about process management thread threading and uh, concurrency then what are all the commands to get into a server and stuff like that so those kind of things are really helpful in this area and then once you go for that uh, you will up, again you need to go into like basics of git and other things so those those kind of things might help then it's about the programming language something like javascript or um, okay there is no ph oh yeah php is here so yeah so not many people are respecting php but look at this even they are willing to go with javascript because javascript is there in both client side and the server side uh, that's one good thing and uh, you just need to learn only once and you can uh, become both front end developer as well as back end developer right and uh, again you go with the version control system then you go with the relational databases so uh, i i mostly use mysql and mariadb and uh, but nowadays pgsql is picking up a lot uh, that is one of the good thing and what exactly you know you need to know about databases so there are these four things um, about data databases so object relation mapping uh, then we have asset compliance which is atomicity uh, consistency integrity and uh, durability then we have got the transactions transactions are like you know like whenever you are trying to do something like a a uh, bank transaction so you need to have like a database that's getting updated right so that exactly is a transaction and uh, you'll be learning more about the databases in that case then once you complete the databases then comes the next step that is what we are going to do today it's about the apis so it's all about rest apis and we will be working on rest apis today rest apis are nothing but everything is like completely a json based output so you either put a get post put delete or patch request and then based on that you get a response the response will be in the form of json and json apis can be consumed by the front end applications something like react or anything and uh, ab ab apart from these things you might really require to know more about caching and web security because this is the place you need to make sure your security stays really up because this is the back end part which you are working on and security comes 
with the utmost priority and also caching for the performance. So um, you can either use a content delivery network or a client side caching or a server side caching, something like that. So generally they won't do any server side caching because obviously server side, you need to make sure you need to get all the data fresh. And uh, because of that, you need to have some kind of like a, uh, you can't cache the responses. For example, let's say you log in with your username and password and you don't want to see my details, right? So that's exactly what is server side caching with respect to client side caching. Then comes the testing. So many of these companies in uh, uh, the corporate, they require you to write the unit test, integration test, behavior test, et cetera. So there is a, this concept called as test driven development. So get a quick idea about what exactly test driven development is and how they that would be helping you. So test driven development will kind of like help you in a lot of good way. So you write the test first, make it fail, and then you make write the code to pass the test that's because that in that way you know like this is what you want to write so that you don't need to write a test again but the only problem with that is if you are writing the test in the wrong way that becomes like a, uh, that messes up the whole thing then comes the continuous integration and continuous delivery this is where is the main thing when you are trying to develop the code you push it to the github or git repository and then it takes it so there's a there's a git workflow that's been that would be followed here so what happens here is you would be trying to um, up, upload the code like you know push the code to the git repository once you push that code it will be there in your branch and you need to do a pull request or a merge request to the main branch then there will be a couple of reviewers who review the code and make sure everything is perfect then they will do the merging and then it goes and merges. Once the once it merges with the main branch, which is usually master, the CACD pipeline stands for continuous integration and continuous delivery. So CACD pipeline, what it does is it's gonna take up the content and then it's gonna try to deploy it. So in the continuous delivery part, what it does is it goes to, um, it kind of like copies the files that are required, then it does the compilation, etc., And then it deploys, it's gonna, technically copy the file to your web server and then it will be ready for viewing by the user. So that is CA and CD. Uh, and after that, there are different principles in this solid and dry principles are very favorite of mine. And there are different types of architectures as well. So microservices architecture is one of the common architecture nowadays. And uh, apart from these things, there are other, like if you want to go explore really further after this, then you can have a look at like what all the different thing, things that are there here and you can have a look at these things, right? Okay, so um, that's how you become a full stack developer, uh, combining both front end and back end developer. So that's that's something which I wanted to say to you. Um, yeah, and apart from that, uh, let me have a quick look at the, um comments so can you share some websites made in node.js that's um i mean there are a lot of things okay let me start with mine mine itself so mine um what i would suggest is uh so for people who don't know uh this is my website uh and i've been using uh, php and mysql in the back backend but literally this is a static site so my website starts like this hi i'm praveen kumar and uh, i'm these things then there is a quick introduction and uh, all these things are done using javascript and jquery it uses bootstrap framework and uh, apart from these things uh the only place which is it is dynamic is this part where it you it uses php for uh, storing the data on a MySQL database. Apart from that, obviously the blog part. So someone asked me if there is anything that is running on Node.js. Yes, this is running on Node.js. It is written using a blog application framework called Ghost. And uh, yeah, so that's that's a Node.js application and it's running on my VPS right now uh, that can be accessible by this website. Um, then let's have a quick look at um, other stuff. I'm studying in this, studying React in this lockdown. My aim is to be a Mernstack developer. You are great. 
I like to move how to okay move step by step. I just explained that one. Uh, LinkedIn, PayPal, etc. I'm not sure whether LinkedIn uses uh, Node.js because LinkedIn uses .NET technologies, I believe. Uh, if I'm wrong, because uh, if I'm not wrong, so uh, LinkedIn is recently or maybe a long time before it was acquired by Microsoft and. Generally, most of the Microsoft-based websites are based on uh, um, .NET technologies and other things. And yeah, so we are not covering Google Auth here. We will be um, first thing we will we will be trying to cover the uh, authentication. But since it's just a hour and a half or two hours webinar, uh, I'm not sure what is the best thing I could do because I also need to make sure every single person understands it. And uh, that's one thing. Uh, what is the future of web development? We should wait and see, uh, but I'm pretty sure that it's gonna, it's not gonna die. Uh, do we also need Node.js for app development? Generally, when we are doing a app application development, when you are using Node.js, you mainly use this package manager. So it is called NPM and Node Package Manager. And that is the only thing that you might be really using for this, for installing the dependencies and other things. Other than that, it is a JavaScript runner. So that's the only thing I could think of like app development, but only if it is something related to JavaScript, for example, React.js or AngularJS or Vue.js. Uh, and uh, yeah, so how to keep location feature in web? So there is something called as geolocation API and this comes in client side. So in the client side, you can try to request for um, location from the client and then using the geolocation API, which is an asynchronous call, what it does is it tries to access your devices GPS and gets the coordinates from it. And uh, as I said, you it is an asynchronous call. It's gonna take some time to get the request. So based on that, you need to uh, make your uh, application wait. And at the same time, you shouldn't get into a trouble of like, you know, it's it's gonna be a callback function, but, it, but make sure you don't get into a trouble of like making your users wait for a long time. So that's that's one thing. So that, that way you can get the latitude and longitude locations. And uh, based on that, you can do some work. Okay, so uh, uh, there are, uh, Vijay, see, when, when you're asking, this is uh, Vijay, and for all these people who are asking, give some websites to learn something, please, I will say only one website, which is google.com. Just go ahead, search for it. Um, obviously, you can also subscribe to my channel. Sorry, Zobi, just wanted to give my channel a quick introduction as well. Hope you don't mind. So I do have a shop as well in YouTube. So um, most of my webinars are there as well. And a lot of things are like beginner level uh, things. So, I mean, like when you, when you, uh, Zubi has also providing a lot of uh, different courses and uh, tutorials, and they are also trying to bring in people like me to give you a lot of insightful uh, webinars and please keep following them. And uh, there are like loads and loads of things coming in. And not only that, you also get, um, I mean, Google for everything. You get uh, you get everything literally. So that's one thing. Um, and how much memory does a medium level Node.js application usually consumes? Literally very negligible. So um, any machine with like even four gigs of RAM will be working out fine for Node.js. Think about JavaScript run, runners, like for example, Chrome is one of the JavaScript runners as well, right? So Chrome and Node.js use a JavaScript engine called as V8 JavaScript engine. And uh, you can try using the, I mean, like uh, that's that's the main thing. So uh, when you think about Java, uh, Chrome, you know how much memory it's gonna use. It's gonna be like the memory hungry thing. So um, that's one thing. So four gigs of RAM and a decent processor should be enough for a Node.js application to run. And one more thing is when you are running it somewhere, it's gonna be obviously running in a, a good server, a decent server, right? Most of the server side uh, components or like most of the server side applications will be in a good shape. So I believe uh, it should not be a um, real pressing issue when it comes to the servers. So Node.js is pretty good with that. And uh, it is actually better than PHP's memory consumption as well. Um, 
in react what to choose between functional component and class component well this is not a react thing but uh, functional components are always very quick while class components will have its own payload and other things so when it comes to functional components it's going to be just a mapper which takes in some data and then it goes it but if you need to use all these uh, life cycle methods and other things then you go for a class component um when i install editors to work react many errors are coming in npm once i rectified then some other <laughs> this is a very common issue with node js not just with react js it's it's a common uh, issue with javascript so it's it's about the issue like you need to understand what exactly the error based on the error you can really rectify there are i mean for me when i try to do a lot of program i mean i've been working with node js and react js for the past 5 years but haven't uh, got to that extent of uh, screwing up my uh, what do you call this my local repository or something like that but yeah please refer some resources or websites to learn node js uh, google um deeksha and shakti why did you delete your messages okay uh, but what if the user turn off the javascript for their browser will it still run uh no unfortunately no and uh, react which is completely in javascript whatever you are trying to work on stuff etc it is completely in javascript and what happens is there is something like a no script kind of a thing and uh, uh no script is one place where it's gonna um, show you whatever that that is even if the browser is not when when the browser switches off the javascript at that point of time you will see the no script content and in react there is uh, there are a lot of uh, you know snap tools that convert the react into static sites without scripts and other things so in that way um to an extent javascript is not required but most of the browsers nowadays come with javascript and if not what you can do is in the no script if you want to get the full experience of this website please turn on your javascript like that we can do um and uh, that's that's the only best thing you can do uh, iodel because um we can't expect every single person to have the javascript enabled or like ev- not not everyone is ideal right so in that case um yeah and uh, considering the user experience obviously when you have to think as a developer you need to make sure what happens if the javascript is disabled if is the website still usable you need to think about it as a developer so that comes in the development point of view and uh, the other thing is can you share your website link which is shown it is praveen.science i can quickly show it again for you um give me a second so it's uh, it's praveen dot s e n c praveen dot science and uh, my blog is blog dot praveen dot science and uh, yeah that's that's the website link and uh, the same thing is with my youtube as well youtube dot com slash praveen dot praveen science so that's that's the that's the youtube link as well so uh, right uh, so everywhere when when you when you look at my uh, name it's going to be praveen science so uh, i'll just copy uh, i'll just copy this and put it on um, put it on the youtube channel so that's me actually you can click on my name here like this is what i'm uh, look uh, seeing right so yeah so that's that's one thing uh, and apart from that uh, any other questions nope so anything else so no questions so far and what what we can do today is let's kind of like try to create a website sorry a api application which might help you in creating a um, quick i mean this is going to be a very basic introduction for creating an api application api web uh, api web application and uh, we can maybe use react js to fetch the data maybe we can see we can try that way and uh, are you all ready that's my question so uh, let me share my screen and then start uh, doing it uh, until then let me stop my video as well anyway it is not needed after this just give me a second
okay before that we will be looking at what exactly is my configuration and other things so um let me share my screen and uh, i'll explain what my configuration my dev environment is so if you try typing praveen dev environment so that's something which i'm gonna put it on youtube as well so so the first thing that comes is the my development environment and here is where you can see completely my configuration what all things that i'm using here and stuff like that so i'm using google chrome as the web developer uh, sorry web browser and uh, this is a pretty decent browser which helps you in a lot of things and also i'm using a couple of uh, uh, Chrome extensions. The main extension that I generally use here is the React Dev Tools, and uh, that's mainly for uh, checking out the React um, React things. But uh, unfortunately, I don't have my current computer with me, so um, I don't have anything right now to show you. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a GitHub repository, okay? And uh, I'll share the link with everyone so that it is perfectly uh understandable so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna create a new public repository it's gonna be zuby api stuff something like this and uh, it's gonna be a public repository and i'm not using anything so i'm just gonna click on create repository and it's gonna create me a quick repository in GitHub. And the one thing is, this is completely free. GitHub is free. Node.js is free. Everything is free. And before that, I will also teach you how to install Node.js and I'll also get you the right um, development environment, like set up how to how to set up Node.js, how to set up your ID, etc. So uh, let me put this on uh, the YouTube as well so that it it is available to everyone. And uh, unfortunately, I don't think I can put any of the um what do you call this i can put the complete url but i'll just put this alone and then that should that should help you okay that's going to be a nice effect now in a few seconds okay great so um now we've got the repository ready and what we will be doing is we will be cloning this repository so uh quick look through my uh development environment so i have been using chrome for all the development purposes with uh, react dev tools and other development tools then i use zoom for all these communication which you can clearly see we are on zoom then or youtube uh, then we are using git for uh, version control systems and uh, then I've, I've i've also got this nice git shortcuts here so there are like loads and loads of git shortcuts and uh, there is also a git begin git uh, beginning uh, git and stuff like that so what i would say is let me quickly find it out for you i guess it's git basics of git and uh, so that gives you a good idea about how to create a new repository how to check out a repository what is the workflow that you need to follow how to add and commit the changes then how to push the changes from your local to your um remote repository, then what is the branching criteria that you should be using, how to get the right branches correctly done, and how to update your local code with the ultimate updated code, how to merge the code, then how do you tag things? So when you are trying to release something, you will be using version controls, right? Like versions, right? So this is my version 1.0, this is version 2.0, something like that, right? For that, you will be using tagging, then how to see the git log where it displays all the changes in a good order then um, there are other things that are here so there are like loads and loads of things so you can have a look at the basics of git and quick start guide uh, for the basics to to learn the basics and let me quickly have a look at the chat in case if there is anything okay great we are clear right with that being said i'll go back to my personal dev environment where okay so one more thing which i'm doing is i'm on a mac os mission and i use something called as item 2. item 2 is a terminal replacement let me show you how it looks it looks awesome and unfortunately in this computer i don't have it it's it's not my computer my computer is actually dead 
in the apple store i'll be getting it next week so <laughs> sorry about that so i'll be using something called as iterm and omizsdsh oh and these two things are like awesome things and have a look at them then finally skipping all these things meld is one another good thing uh, and yes node js is what we are using for working with stuff then typora is one more uh, nice uh, application that i use to uh, you know like uh, write markdown text so for example if you are writing any readme document or something like that you can use this so it is similar to your uh, you know um, um, word or excel or uh, sorry microsoft word or uh, something like that and what it does is it it actually writes everything in markdown so you just need to copy this and put it on your uh, github page or something like that and i always prefer markdown because this can be exported into all the different ways so if you want it in a pdf html without styles word document open office rtf i mean like literally every way and finally even image wise you can also export it and all my blogs are written in markdown doc markdown language only and finally coming to the re real hands on thing we will be working with visual studio code this is the main editor that i generally use because of i'm a wesboss fanboy so this guy uh, kind of like brainwashed me to use uh, this one and i do have my personal configuration here so if i open uh, um, visual studio code it looks like this with nice neat neat way and uh, stuff like that so i'm using a modified uh, uh, theme and here's my configuration file which you can actually have a look at what are all the configuration are here okay and apart from these things i can also tell you what all the extensions that i am using these are the main extensions that are required i mean just these three so this is for the react and redx graphql two uh, shortcuts then eslint and prettier these two things are mainly used for making formatting the code in the right way that is that is something that i generally use and apart from that right let's crack on and let's start working on it okay so what i'm going to first do is i'm going to open up uh, my uh, one of the i'll just open up a terminal window directly where is mine okay just a second so we are we are here all right so um so we have got this thing right so github actually gives you the complete details of how you should be uh, cloning things and stuff like that so what i am going to do is i'm just going to clone this repository so that that makes it very easier so when i'm cloning the repository what i generally do is i just copy it along with the username so this is the cloning url what i do is i'll just copy my username and paste it on top of here so that i don't need to write the password again and again so let me open a new window and so this is this is a normal terminal that i'm uh, that we are that i'm using so it's not item it's not my computer by the way so that's the real reason uh let me try to uh use a take command which is one of the oh my zsh commands uh which creates a directory and moves your moves it to uh, your directory as well so let me see if i have Ravine slash. Okay, great. I'll I'll just go with this one. So I'll just open. Okay, I'll just go to my directory and I'll do a git clone. Right. So it's gonna say that you have cloned an empty repository. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the Zuby ABA stuff and here if I open this one, it opens up with me and all I need to do is if I just drag it and drop it here. I can even get rid of the terminal now. I don't even need the terminal now because the reason is I have a built-in terminal here. If I if I go to terminal and create new terminal, it's going to open it in the same thing. It is also built in with the git items and this is this is one of the features of omizsh. It's going to show me if this um if it is clean directory what is the branch currently i don't need to do a git status to see all these things okay and uh, that is one good thing and one more thing is if i let's say if i oh, uh, create a file let's say zuby.io or something like that it immediately shows me that okay this directory is not clean and also it shows me here that there are some changes here so there are untracked changes so if i delete this one uh Okay, that's fine. If I delete this one, it's gonna go back to the same way. Like it is perfect. 
and uh, finally let's really get into the uh, current thing so the first thing which we should be doing is create a package.json so what exactly is a package.json so package.json is a file that is going to be a package descriptor so that is the one main file that is being used by node.js for all the package management and other things and uh, package.json what it does is um, uh, to tell in in technical words it's actually a manifest file it contains the metadata of the project where we uh, kind of like define the properties of a package so every project can be considered into a package so uh, that way we will be using a package thing okay so let's go ahead let's create our first package.json but at the same time we should not be creating it in our own way there is a command for it which is a part of node package manager the npm thing so we will be using an npm in it okay and one more thing if you have any questions just uh, put it on the comments so that i i try to quickly look at the skim through the comments and uh, um try to check this out okay and moreover i feel that i should be uh, increasing the font size or something like that so whenever i try to work on these kind of things let me increase the font size as well hope hope this font size is better okay so the first command that you would be using is something called as npm in it okay so npm in it initializes the package here okay now when i try to put enter what it first does is it says that this utility will walk you through the pack creating a package.json file that is what we need to do is right so we need to create a package.json file and uh, this will kind of like even though it is a command line interface it is going to help you in creating everything one by one so what is the package name you want to give the default is zuby api stuff let's go with that what is the version this is the first version i am creating so let it go with that so this is like a zuby api stuff entry point so this is the first script that needs to be executed so right now what i would say is i would go with a server.js file okay test command i i am not in a position to write any tests at the moment so i'm just going to quickly quit and git repository it automatically shows that okay this is the git repository that we will be using and yeah i'm okay with that keywords um api zuby um Oh, actually, I don't know how to enter the keywords here. So for now, I'm just going to put Zuby, Zuby API, and then author. It's me. And license. I don't know what li ISC license means, so I'll just go with this. And there you go. So this is what is going to be written in the whole package.json. So it's going to give you uh, give the application name. Then there is a version. Then what is the description about it? Then you have the main application that needs to be run. Then what are all the scripts that we are using? Um, then we have our repository. I need to change this uh, Praveen signs at GitHub to normal github.com. Keywords, it's going to say Xobi and API. Oh, now I understand what I have to write in keywords. So that's going to be a space separated keywords, I guess. Great. OK, um, author is me. License is ISC. Again, uh, the bugs, the URL is this one. Home page is also this one. This is perfect. Yeah, it is OK. And I'm going to give either I can give yes or already it has said if you are OK, just press enter. That's it. So immediately you can see that the package.json file is in, uh, created. So what I generally do is I always try to create a lot of mini commits so only one file is changed yes okay i'm gonna commit this one so um visual studio code has a built-in git client as well so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna add this client so add this file and then i'm gonna say that um initialized package okay that's that should be enough okay so once i do it i need to push the code right so if i just click on push it's gonna obviously push it to the repository here. So let me try to find out if I can uh, get my YouTube. Oh, not YouTube, sorry. Uh, where's my GitHub? Yes, it's here. So if I refresh this page, I can quickly see that there is a package.json file created. It's a bit slow and I'm not sure what, oh. Okay, sorry, it's actually asking for a password. Oh, shit. So just, Give me a second. Uh, 
Okay, I guess I forgot my password. Right, I don't have my password here. Just give me one second. Let me try to configure that. I need to go to my developer settings and create a, another personal access token. So just give me one second. Let me create one more. Okay, great. So I have regenerated the password for this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try doing the push again. I hope you are able to see my screen. So it's going to ask me for password again. So yes, go on. So now here at this bottom, you can see that it's going to sync and then it says everything is synced. Uh, and if you just refresh this page, you can see that there you go. That is the package.json. And uh, yes, obviously, I need to update my uh, uh, the author and other things. So just give me one second. So how do I uh, update my author code? OK, git config uh, author. So you what it should be user dot name, which is going to be Praveen Kumar. And uh, the same way, it's going to be git user dot email which is going to be science at gmail.com. And what I need to do is I need to reset the auto. So for everything, like for example, let's say we need to do something or something like that. I always Google it and it is easy in that way. So get reset author. So all you need to do is you just need to do a git commit and amend that. Where was it? So git commit amend and uh, you just need to do the author change. So so all I just need to do is just do something like this and it's going to be Praveen Kumar and sign the so now, now the problem here is I have actually updated the author thing. And now you could see that this particular hash has been changed. So if you see here, the hash here is completely should be different. So if I open this, yeah, it's FE something, but here it is C0 something. And now it will be saying both my local branch and the remote branch is diverged. So what I would be doing is only for this kind of an incident, I will be doing a git push hyphen F, which means it's gonna do a force push and never ever use the force push option because it's sometimes it's gonna screw up the whole thing. Now my name has come correctly and this is this is exactly what we should be uh, doing in case if you mess up something but don't ever try this in a, a teamwork environment because there will be a lot of people working around you and they might get affected because of this all right now that has been done so this is one thing which we learned about how to uh, change the author in the git commit and stuff like that so i'm going to quickly have a look at um Right. All right. So uh, with respect to the uh, extensions, let me have a quick, uh, let me show you all the quick list of the extensions that I am using. So I'm my personal computer uses all these eight extensions. So I'll go through one by one now. So the first thing is the Pretia code format. So Pretia, what it does is, so whenever you write a React.js code or any JavaScript or client side code or any of the JavaScript, side server side code what it does is with help of es lint which is actually a linter for javascript which is kind of like the checker for javascript making sure the whatever javascript that you write is valid along with that prettier formats the code in a nicer way i'll show you a quick demo of how prettier works so let's say i've got a new file which is gonna be uh okay let's let's go with our uh, app.js well, what did we write in the package.json? Is it app.js or server.js? Okay, let's go with the server.js. So let's create a server.js. And then the moment I create it, it's going to 
consider this as a JavaScript JavaScript React. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is uh, before writing any code, uh, I will try to write const app equal to hello uh, and then const place equal to um, Zuby. Uh, then const message equal to you can see that this is the worst way i can write any code right so please subscribe to both zubies you zuby and my youtube channel <laughs> i know this is bad okay now what i'm going to do is i'm just gonna copy this whole thing which is actually not formatted and i'm gonna paste it here look at what it did Prettier actually did the magic now. So I clear everything. I remove everything. All these things are removed. The moment I paste it, it's gonna read the read its Prettier's uh, configuration. So the configuration that it has is uh, it's gonna format this particular file. Uh, it is checking for if there is any Prettier ignore. There is nothing. Then uh, file info. It's gonna be is it ignored or not? No. It is not ignored, so let's continue working on prettying it. This one. So, what is the best parser that I can use on this? It's a Babel parser, which is going to be a uh, JavaScript parser. Then, what it does is it's trying to find out if there is any local configuration. Nope, nothing. So, it is going to go with the VS Code's configuration. Then, the prettier options from the VS Code are if there is any arrow parenthesis, avoid it. Uh, sorry, arrow function parenthesis. Then, if you want a back break, if Bracket spacing is needed. Yes, true. End of line is line feed, etc. So we have got a lot of different things. And uh, well, print width should not be 80,000. Uh, okay, I need to make this corrected. So if I go to the settings, and uh, okay, for settings, what I did was I go to the code preferences settings, and here, prettier width. And I don't want it to be 80,000. I'll just put it as 80. Okay. And now it's going to work correctly. So if I cut everything, clear all these things, and then I paste it here. So it's going to get the 80 print width. So all these things are created from the Visual Studio Code's configuration. And it uh, within uh, 34 milliseconds, 35 milliseconds, the formatting is completed. So that's the exact reason why I use Prettier. And if I Oh, um, okay, this is interesting. So if I open a new file, it is actually in the plain text. And if I try pasting it, it becomes a JavaScript React, which is not the thing which I expected, but still, okay. So I'll just put don't save. Okay, fine. So uh, this is the main reason why I use Prettier. Along with Prettier, I'm also using ESLint. ESLint is the one which actually integrates with Prettier and it uh, helps you with identifying the right way of using the whole um, right way of formatting JavaScript and other things. Then finally, we have ES7. OK, this is this is one of the nicest plugin. See, I'm one of the most laziest person you can ever see. So what I generally do is I need all these kind of like, you know, OK, let me show you a quick example of how this works. So if I need to create a class component in React, I do RCC and I immediately get a class component. If I need to do an arrow function in React, I do RAFCE, I get this. I need to do a console.log, CLG, there you go. So this is the main reason I use uh, this particular code. And I guess I have explained everything. This is just a theme, which is uh, which just an, which looks like this. So I really love this theme. So that's the reason I, it's very visual, that's it. So other than that, I have not got any other things. So this is our server.js that we have written just now. And uh, other than that, you can actually see the list of uh, uh, different uh, plugins that I generally use and we can just leave it as such, right. Um, oh, thank you, Eddie Jordi, for coming in. Thank you. And uh, Nishant, what font size are you talking about? I guess I have increased the font size to an extent that even I'm not able to see anything in my computer. Like, I can't work if it is going more than that. Okay, for um, um, is it still okay? Let me let me try to put this. Uh, is this still not visible? Oops. 
Why is Zoom torturing me? <laughs> uh, by the way, uh, the GitHub extension in VS Code, it is always there. So there is nothing that you need to do to create this VS Code extension. So it's always there. So you don't need to uh, do anything. Uh, thanks, Eddie Jody, for coming in. Right. Okay. So, uh, apart from this, uh, uh, any other questions related to VS Code or anything? So, this is this is perfect, right? So, what else uh, we should be doing? So, let's let's go ahead and uh, shall we take a quick break of like two minutes? I'm like literally going down. I'm just gonna put like a quick break for two minutes. and I'll be break back. So yes, Mohammad Hirani, we will be building an app today. Uh, it is going to be an API server and we will be building it right now. All right. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, thanks for the two minutes break. Let's get rid of all these things. So we have got the server JS here. All right. And now what we will be doing is um, we will start with something called as a node mod. So how does Node.js work? That's the first thing we will be looking at now. Okay. So we have already given the main file as the server.js. And how does this NPM and those kind of things work? That's something which we should be doing. Okay. So um, the first thing that we will be looking at here is uh, there should be a, a, a start script. So if you try putting something like this and if you type start it's going to show you what should be the start script and let's say if i put node and then server uh, and even before doing that if i do uh, npm start we will be using npm for everything and it will say there is no start script i believe oh it's going to do the same thing that's great so um it's it's going to show us that uh, whatever is there in the server that gets executed so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do a quick console.log and say like hello zuby and save it the moment i save it it automatically inserts the semicolon as well as giving me a space in the end so if i try to do another npm start it's gonna say hello zuby here here's the output and see i don't want to keep on like you know uh, doing hello zuby i mean putting npm start every single time so the first thing which i want to do is something called as node mon okay node mon is a package that 
is installed through node package manager and it helps you in automatically running when the files are changed so what i'm doing is i'm going to do npm install nodemon and once this is done so it's going to like take some time it's going to fetch everything and stuff like that now i need to do one more thing i need to create another thing called as dot git ignore file <sighs> A new file which says dot git ignore and uh, i should ignore the node modules or else you can see that how many files this git is tracking so once i uh, ignore this whole complete um, content it's it's it won't be like version controlled it won't be tracked and we can see that there are no vulnerabilities as well which is a good sign so uh, currently what i did is in the uh, packages i have installed the node mon right so i'm just going to add these three uh, files so if i go back to here uh, i'll be adding these things uh, and i'll say like installed node mon so this is the first thing that you will generally do so node mon what it does is let me show you what it actually does so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to convert this node server into node mon server okay the moment i do this and do an npm start it's going to again show me hello zuby here and it says that clean exit waiting for changes before restart so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to hello zuby and youtube and if i save this it's going to again restart it so it says restarting due to changes and it restarts the whole application so this way it also helps us in how exactly the whole um, what do you call this um this helps us in not we we don't need to like you go ahead and do a control c and then run the re npm start again and stuff like that so that works and one more thing is how we will be creating a quick server so we'll be using something called as express js so there is something called express js which is one of the node js famous web application framework for a minimal uh, you know like a minimal server thing so there is a quick getting started guidelines like you know like uh, uh, there is this express generator there is okay there is this express generator this is really good in terms of like if you want to create a new express server or something like the whole thing uh, but before that this is this is going to help you in that case but instead of that what we will be doing is we will be creating the normal express js thing so what we need to do is the first thing is the install the express js server so uh, let's create another uh, okay i have updated start script to use node mon okay great so now we have done this the next thing which we need to do is install the express js server so npm install express is the simple way to install express js in your local application so once that is done obviously there will be a lot of packages that gets run and then the package.json and uh, package lock will get updated so we'll be you we'll be like adding those changes and uh, let's do the installed express js okay perfect now that's done so once you have done this uh, the first thing that you should be doing is uh, let's get rid of all these things now we need to show some kind of a server side code right so this needs to run on the server side so what we will be doing is we need to first get the express js server so for that we will do const express equal to require and then we'll uh, yeah we'll be using express here okay now we've got express js server here okay so how this is okay if i if i do a console.log express it's going to show us what exactly is there in this thing so it's it's the main express js thing that worked okay so express js is the class okay with a class we need to do a instantiate the express js into an object so what we will be doing is we 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 need our original app right so this is the app and uh, we will be using express uh, uh, one particular instance of express so now we have got our app server running here okay and now the first thing we need to do is the app server needs to listen to some kind of a port okay let's define a port here commonly the port number will be 3000 so let's use the 3000 port because it is more than 1024 and let's let's quickly make sure the 3000 port is um, free 
So if I try putting localhost 3000, it's obviously free. So there is nothing is there. So we will use the port 3000. Now what we will be doing is we need to listen this app. We'll, make, we'll need to make this app listen to this port. So the first thing which we should do is app.listen the port. So once this is listened, we, we can say that console.log um, listening in port 3000. And then I'm just saving it. So it immediately says that it is listening in the port 3000. So if I go to your go to my uh, browser, type in localhost colon 3000, boom, it worked. So last time it was saying uh, I cannot. I mean, like there is there is no site here or something like that was coming right now. I'm able to see that there is a website coming in. Okay. So that's that's one thing. Um, then the next thing is so let let me quickly have a look at the chat messages if we have got anything yeah no chat messages thank you so right let's let's go ahead um so the, you can also notice that there is an error coming here it says error and it says cannot get slash which means there is no root on top to get the um get the site there so there is this this root doesn't exist or something like that so we need to write some code to make sure the path is there so every time when you are saving something you need to make sure you need to close the npm start and then rerun that is the main reason why i used node mon for this okay so now let's go ahead do app dot what did they say they said get method right let's do a get method okay so get takes in two parameters okay uh, let's let's go with this get here okay so get is gonna take um okay it has three overloads is it okay so this is the first url okay this is the slash is the url and then we have the request handler okay the first one is the request and the second one is the response okay so in the request we will just leave what whatever the request is we are just gonna say something like a response dot send send will give you a html or a text output instead of that what we will do is we will use a json response okay in the json response let's do hello zuby and let's save this the moment i save it it's it's gonna again restart due to changes and then it is starting the node server js and it is listening in port 3000 now okay if i refresh this page it's gonna show me hello zuby here okay basically we just built an api server any questions so far Okay, I'll just be picking up the questions as it comes. And uh, yeah, so this way we have got the uh, Hello Zuby uh, uh, coming up as the first thing. And then the second thing is we need to run something on this, right? Okay, so we have got the, if let's say we will have something like um, const, um, what do you call this? Uh, users maybe okay users let's give some list of users okay so i'll just go ahead and uh, create something like um there should be like a username okay let me do praveen and let's say full name it's gonna be praveen kumar same way like uh let's do yash Yash Sharma and uh, anyone would like to volunteer your names. I'm just I'll just quickly pick up from someone from the chat message. I'll just go ahead with Eddie Jordy then that's easier for me. OK, so Let's do Eddie. Right. 
right so we've got like three three people now what i can do is i can create another root okay this is one more root i'm going to create i'm going to put name it as users and then for the response what i'm going to do is i'm going to put in all the users or is it user it's just user okay so i'm just going to put the user here and then if i save this now it doesn't show any difference in the home page for the slash root but if i try to put slash users it's going to show me something like this so if i inspect this and then go to my uh, let me zoom this in as well and if i go to my network and then refresh this page so this is going to be a json response you can clearly see that the content type is application slash json and the character set we don't care so in inside the preview you can see that it is an array and each array data is like you got something like a details of the user details of the particular user we can also do something like parameter parameterized thing okay so what we can do is if you want to create a parameter here you need to put colon and then add the user id or id is going to be the parameter and to access the parameter we will be using request dot params or something like that okay so let's let's try doing this so rest dot json um so here there could be a possibility okay first thing let's try to show the particular user okay request dot param is the one of the things and sorry params dot id that's what we will be using here so once we do this if i try putting request dot users slash let's say zero so it's going to show me my particular entry okay if i do one it's going to show me yash entry and if i do two it's going to show me ad jody's entry and if i do three that is where we get into a trouble okay look at this it hasn't got anything any problem yet if i press enter it's going to fail okay it's gonna send nothing actually it's showing me 200 okay but literally what we should be doing is we should make sure this particular user is not there so we should show some kind of a message so what we need to do is here we can make this into a normal like you know like a function with a body and we can do something like if if this is there then do this else well uh, it's always better to go with something like this way else let's do with like rest dot g first thing we should set the status okay so status code we can set it and we can set it as 404 404 means everyone knows that it is a not found thing okay and rest.json sorry uh, user not found and if i save this and refresh this uh, okay sorry i guess i need to use status yep and let's save this one and refresh this page it's going to say sorry not found at the same time it is also going to show you the exact status code so for anything that you are requesting a response it's going to be a get uh, get status okay it's going to be a get method so the different types of methods are get then we have post then we have uh, put then we have delete okay these are the different commonly used uh, methods so post is for mainly creating something put is mainly for updating something delete is mainly for deleting something as i as deleting or removing something let me quickly have a look at the um chat messages so um sorry bigel i'm not sure what exactly do you mean by uh, what what should i actually repeat 
for uh, API server. So first thing what I did was, okay, let's go with the step one, step two, step three. Okay, step one, create a get, uh, let's do this way. Step one, include express JS in your application. So that's the first thing you need to do. Step two, create a an instance of an express JS server. This is not exactly a step, but okay. Step three, think about a configuration, sorry, a port where this needs to listen to. Then finally, just created a user. This is not anything related to the steps and uh, create a create the first initial route. Create a user's route. Create an individual user route. So this will do something like it's gonna check for. So so this initial route is the step four then. And actually before even step four, oh, okay. Once you do the step four, make sure you listen the app to a port. Okay, step four or five. Okay, step five listen to the port and finally other things will follow so now you have got a dynamic route okay so this route is a dynamic route so based on the number here based on the request.params.id it's gonna add all these things for you okay so that's about the whole concept here. So I'm going to save all these things and I've got a problem. Okay, so what exactly has happened here? I guess I messed up something. Wow. I'm just trying to find what exactly the problem is. So server.js line number 40, right. Okay, I cannot have these things without a definition. That is what it says. Okay, great. Now, uh, at this point of time, it should be working fine. And uh, that's here. here's where I have added all the comments as well and uh, any other questions related to the api server now we have our working api server running perfectly fine the next thing we should be doing is trying to fetch the contents from the api server using either react js or some other site so some other um, javascript application or kind of a client side framework any questions so far yeah keep Keep letting me know and let me try to clear these things up. For some reason, this doesn't work. Right. Okay. So, for all the other things, let's try to do something on this one. Okay. So, when you're trying to create something, it's going to use app.post. Okay. So, for app.post, the parameters are similar. So, you need to have uh, the slash users, maybe slash new, let's use that way. And, uh, but, but instead of using slash users slash new, let's use the slash users itself so that it's gonna, uh, use the post method and work on this function. Okay. So once we do this here, it's gonna do again, the request and response. Then at this point of time, let's say what is there in the request so uh, request dot body is something which we need to look into okay 
the moment I put this one, let me see if I have Postman installed. Yes, great. I've got Postman installed. So Postman is one of the best API testing application, which helps you in testing the APIs and stuff like that. So it looks like this. And I'm not sure if there is anything that is confidential in this. So just give me one second. Let me quickly have a look at. Uh... Yep, as known, there are something like confidential stuff. So um, let me open a new workspace. Okay, right. So Postman looks something like this. So if I go to APIs or something like collections or something like that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new basic get request. And uh, I guess there should be some other way to uh, uh, use the collections history. Okay, APIs, activity, monitors, run now maybe. Okay, not this one. So let me, let me create a new... Uh, new request itself and uh, then I'll just do like uh, let's just put Zuby API okay I'm not sure how I should be creating a new request here new tab maybe okay this is this is interesting oh we should be using this build okay fine right so we we've got this one so uh, just go back to my Praveen workspace and click on the build okay perfect now if i try to open up this thing so i all i need to do is i just uh, oops i just copy this part and paste it here and click on send look at this this is going to be a get request and these are the different types of requests that you can find so mostly it's get post put patch did it these are the five most common requests that we generally use and apart from this others are like not not that important so let's do a send and immediately the moment i send i kind of like get the whole thing so this is the complete request which i get so it's not the preview thing uh Okay, I guess this is this is what I need to look at. So we've got all these things. And then if I try to put users slash five or something like that, it's going to give me a four not four not found response. So sorry, the user is not found. And uh, that's that's how it looks like. And finally, let's go with creating a new user. So if you want to go with a new user to create something new, you need to go with the post request. And for the post request, what I'm going to do is instead of doing the console.log, I'm going to do json sorry response.json i'm just going to give the request body here so instead of query parameters i'm going to create the body of the request using form data okay like form url encoded so the first thing is i'm going to give name hello and uh Actually, it's supposed to be these two things, right? So we have got this const user and it's either username and full name, right? So username, and then we have this full name. Uh, and uh, let me put like username as, oops, let me put username as hello. And the full name is gonna be hello world. Okay, so if I try to do this and send a post request here, make sure you select post here, it's definitely gonna go and execute the particular thread here so we are not sure whether this website actually this web server really uh, got this particular request right so what we can do is we can create something called as um, morgan so npm install morgan this is one of the nice tool that i have seen which actually helps us in looking at the um, what are all the requests that we are going it's actually a middleware so I'll tell you how to use the Morgan middleware here. So here, let's include Morgan middleware. So how do you include a Morgan? How do you include a middleware as using app.use? So this will give you the um, 
middlewares like you can either use a middleware here and that's how you create a middleware middleware is something that sits between the request and the program so that it needs to do something so const morgan same way as require and we'll use morgan here so once we use this you can you can actually do morgan and then you need to put it in one particular format which i mostly use dev format and if i save this immediately it's going to update it and restart the whole thing now if i try to go to my browser and open localhost slash it's going to quickly tell me like there is a get request to slash and it took around 6 milliseconds uh, then we can go for slash users okay let me show you how it works in side by side okay so i'm going to put slash users and press enter immediately you can see that slash user was requested then if i do slash users slash one or two maybe it's going to show me slash users slash two and the same way with zero it's my name and this is with yash name so this way every time when a request is sent it's going to be a log Git, uh, so a server request log that is the main reason for why we use morgan and apart from this we have also created this um create a new file or something like that right create a new user so at this point you can't see any um any of these um whether you are you are actually giving this uh, output or not so i'm going to send this thing again so let me open visual studio code and postman here so right now i've got only get user slash one so i'm clicking on send here so it is actually going with post user as well so post users nothing is happening here so the reason is i gave the response dot json with request dot body but nothing came in so it looks like we need to use a some kind of a middleware for this as well so what we need to use is app dot use this is for body parsing so express dot json so this is a body parser middleware so once we do this and then try to send this it's going to show us nothing here because we need to give us i guess we need to use raw here and let's say username It's supposed to be full name hello world not username and if i try sending this one with the raw way and send it out okay uh i guess it's about the headers mm. maybe i should be using application slash json and the body is raw okay raw json is already here and still oh there you go i got it so here i've got this one what i need to do is i just need to go here inside this one to check if i have got both username and full name so with that being said i'll just quickly try to get these two things and go to the creation so if REQ dot body dot so we need these two things right I'm gonna do a double thing for making sure this is already there so one means not two means converting forcefully forcefully converting the variable into a true or false so i want both the things to be not empty that's what i'm trying to do so i'm just going to copy this whole thing paste it here instead of username i'm going to give the full name and i'll get rid of this one if these two things are there then what i would be doing is users dot push REQ dot body. Okay, this is what I'm gonna do. Else, 
what i would do is um and and i also need to do res dot json success else i need to say it's supposed to be like a not correct way of doing it right so it's coming under the user error so user needs to give the correct way of uh doing things so res dot status it is something in the 400 codes so i would put 403 uh well 403 should be forbidden right let's find out the list of status code http status codes for incorrect input i believe it should be 404 generally yeah it's going to be 400 invalid data is 400 so what we will do is http 400 and we need to also tell the user that please send only two values with user name and full name that's it now if we if we save this and try to go to postman and let's say hello and hello world but before that what i'm going to do is i'm going to quickly do a http localhost/users and send it out so i kind of like clearly get praveen yash and edi okay now what i'm going to do is i'm going to do the send a post request here so if i do a send post request it's going to say success to me and i go to this send it out again i get hello and world hello world so that's a simple post request let me quickly break for the comments uh regarding debugging in uh, visual studio i'm not sure so uh, no idea about it haven't tried it before if i have got any ideas definitely i would share with you dinesh right so um yeah uh, no questions so far so let's crack on and uh, so that's how you create a basic api server in uh, node js and it is extremely fast as well so um when you refresh this page like for example if i go to users and presenter it's going to show me the username hello and world as well and for deleting and updating things we can also do that way as well so for example let's say let's try to implement the delete method okay so for implementing a delete method we will be using app dot delete for removing something okay so how do you delete something from an array that's the first thing which you should be looking at so um uh, again as a prom uh, promising developer i will be like using the uh, google for it deleting array element javascript so i know that i have the id so based on index so i would be using something like a splice or slice method okay so there are like nine ways to remove an element so let's see what are all the um item by value i don't need to uh, remove item by value splice to remove the elements so here is what that actually works so you need to splice the array and uh, then you do like how many elements that needs to be removed okay so what we will be doing here is let's try using the splice method here so the same way you do app dot delete then slash users slash id you need to give an id for this for sure okay and we have request and response again then here we do the same check that what we generally do here so we'll just copy this whole thing then we will just put like this so in case if this particular id is not there we will say sorry the user is not found and here what we will be doing is um we will be let's send out this one okay let's say like um const user um const requested user is going to be user of request.params.id okay and now we will be doing user dot splice and we will be getting the start number right so that would be request dot params dot id and 
the second value will be how many number of items to be deleted only one element and now we'll be using uh, actually we'll be using the whole thing to be sending like this so we can just get rid of all these things and then we'll just do this so this way when you delete the user if it is successful it will be sending out what user has been deleted at the moment okay so that that way we can also understand okay this is the user that has been deleted so we need to delete this user with an id of four i guess sorry user not found maybe three i guess okay that's interesting oh right because the reason why it is not found why why, why that particular user is missing now because it restarted the code okay when we save the code it got restarted so i'm gonna go here go to the post request click on send it's gonna say success okay or it can also say the length of the id so what particular user id has been created that's actually a good way of doing it but anyway so it's going to be like 0 1 2 and 3 this should be 3 so if i go to you refresh this one it's going to show me the hello world and let's go to the 3 user so we have got the user id 3 okay and we need to delete this user so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a new request i'm going to copy the same thing and instead of get method i'm going to do so if i do a get method it's gonna give me the username and thing this way so it's a status 200 okay okay this is an item potent function so if i click on again and again and again and again it's gonna return me the same thing which means it is an item potent function now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna use a delete method here and then click on send ready okay i'm just gonna pray hope it works so click on in, clicking on this it says status 200 okay and it's also sending me a array element of the deleted one which means it has actually deleted it if i refresh this it's going to show me a 404 boom so that way you can actually delete this one at the same time if you go to users it's going to show me everything and if i try to do the same thing again it's going to come with a 404 and user not found and if i do the same thing with uh, say um, one or something like that it's going to show me this one and if i refresh this page boom that's gone so this is how you kind of like show how it works right and yeah so that's a delete method so uh, so far we have tried making how to do this delete and um stuff and i hope this is a bit clear uh, i'm open for questions right now and uh, yeah so let's uh, let's go ahead with some of the questions that i can answer any questions guys what what do you think about this one this is the easiest way you can create an application and what i'm gonna do now is i'm gonna update all these code in the repository as well so let me first go back to visual studio code save everything add this created an api server and it's been pushed so any questions so far and uh, what do you think so that's that's about it that's what i wanted to uh, tell you all today and uh, hopefully you found this whole session interactive and not exactly interactive yes it is it was actually interactive but interesting let me know okay put versus post good question put is mainly used for updating an existing data while post is for creating a new data any other questions so we will be using a post for creating a completely a new record that was not existing before and put will be like you need to use put with one particular existing record so that that record gets updated so it is similar to a delete method you can say can you tell me how to deploy in prod rather than localhost okay that's again it's like it depends on where you want to deploy because i haven't seen any of the node.js based deployments other than zait with this which is now versal so you can go to this website let me share the screen with you so there is this thing called as zait now which is now a versal it's called versal and here is something which you're gonna deploy for free so you can 
you already have the git push and all these things right then you just go to that particular versor domain and then log into yourself within 15 seconds as they claim you can deploy your node.js application uh there are other things like surge.sh um then so this is again static site publishing uh there is now.sh as what is versal so that is what is versal then uh, what else do we have for deploying and finally we have our heroku which is the common uh, way of deploying a uh, web application so uh, heroku.com is also there so we have got node.js support here and all the other uh, site support and apart from this my website runs on a ci cd pipeline which is connected with a personal vps so vps one which has all the complete root uh, stuff and everything is open in that so you can use either um, either of these things so you can use all these things to make it work any other questions uh put good question put is an item potent yes put is an item potent function because uh, how many times you put with the same code it's going to update the same thing so i believe it is technically not an item potent function because most of the um what do you call this um many many of the database or like many of the application uh, uh specific people what they do is they have this particular uh, thing called as updated time so whenever you are trying to do a put it's it might change the updated time for that record so that way put will not be really item potent but it's actually an item potent function for the data so any function that doesn't change the row repeatedly when you call that is an item potent function so uh, get is definitely an item potent function because it is just going to use the select method or something like that it's going to just fetch the data it, it is not going to change any of the data so it is an item potent so with respect to the data alone not the metadata put is a item potent function so it's 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 a mix of both it depends on how you have developed the code that's the real thing any other questions and is is this clear and you have got all these uh, code available in our repository and everything you can find here with package.log package.json server.js has everything so something like you have step 1 step 2 like literally everything i'm also going to quickly check if i have added all the changes yes it's completely fine everything is available in your code here so zuby api zuby api stuff is the repository and it is under praveen science let me try to post that in uh, youtube but i am not sure whether it works uh, i believe it will not work you won't be able to see the um, let me duplicate this and see if i could see my comment again here yes i can't see it sorry so um yeah this is this is the thing okay and uh, where to learn express and go deep into node js see express dot express js website alone should be enough for this because express js has the ultimate documentation and it has the complete api reference the guide and also it also has the routing and other things as well so if you want to do something like a modular routing you can use the routing methods so this is what i was talking to you about like app.get app.post everything is there here and if you want to do a modular routing even that is yeah even the root parameters are here so you can use the colon and we used id here they have used book id you can use the requ.params but here we have used requ.params.bookid something like that and uh, apart from these things do we have anything else okay so it's a b and uh, this is a callback function there are like so many things are there here so what does json this will give you a json response this will give you a json p support response then there is a redirection uh, this is mainly used for authentication and other things like for example if you want to put your username and password and then you want to put go to the other page or something like that that you can do uh, routing not only you can use the normal routing you can also do a modular router so this is 
this will uh, the express dot router class will create modular router so what you can do is if you want to keep your routes in another file uh, leaving all these middleware what you can do is you can just use a, a use thing like you know um, you just this is the whole birds file okay so what you do is module dot exports this is a way to export from another file like we use export default in uh, react we use module dot exports here and then we export this router here and here we need to include express because express dot router is what we will be using for the modular router usage and here we create like the time log and then i mean this is this is some uh, middleware for this particular router then we do the birds home page then the slash about birds so now if you do this and you you put slash birds here it's gonna open slash birds with this one and slash birds slash about will open about birds that's how you do a modular router and the guide is like really extremely huge and you can actually go with all these things and uh, yeah, you can also serve static files in case if you want to run a static file generator or something like you have a website that is running statically. You can also do this way. You just need to use express.static and uh, that's how you run a static website as well. So all these things are possible and everything is uh, going to be using, uh, you can use the documentation for this purpose. Any other questions? Okay, MERN or MEAN. What do you prefer and why? I prefer MERN React JS because Angular JS I tried learning, but the learning curve is very steep, and uh, I kind of like very um, kind of suck at it. So, but um, React JS it's very easy to learn, and uh, I'm uh, an official React JS trainer as well. So I'm giving a lot of training, and even in Zuby I have given a lot of introduction to React JS, how you do a lot of things, and React JS is very easy compared to Angular JS because Angular JS is a framework. It's a huge, whole, huge thing. While React JS is just a library, and uh, pretty much both of them does the same thing. So I, I would feel to stick with React JS. So that's the reason. All right, guys. Hope the session was really good. And uh, don't forget to subscribe Zuby. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And uh, please uh, connect with me on LinkedIn. I'll send you my LinkedIn details as well so uh, my linkedin accounts is uh, unfortunately i won't be able to uh, send you the link so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna just uh, use the uh, I, i'm just gonna remove the dot com alone and then i'm gonna put the thing in uh, the chat so i hope this works so linkedin.com slash in slash praveen tech is my linkedin account so please um yeah, and uh, finally, um, that's my channel as well. If you click on my uh, face, you can e immediately see my channel. So, yep, go on, and uh, that's it. So, YouTube is Praveen Science, and Facebook is also Praveen Science. You can find me on YouTube. You can find me on Facebook. You can find me on Zuby. You can find me on uh, my website. So, any questions, anytime, I'm happy to talk to you all see you all and uh, yash or anyone is here hey hey yash hi thank you so much Pravin, for this amazing session right like the way you uh, clear each and every single doubt like from basics to advanced each, each kind of doubt you have uh, shorted out and give the basic to advanced knowledge the way you build that uh, particular repository and then uh, build all those kind of things Right, all the stuff you uh, taught them, it's, it's quite amazing. Right? Thankful to you from the side of Ruby, from the whole team from, from our side. And thank you for joining us on a very short notice. It was, thank you so much. So that was a great session. And, all and uh, something which I wanted to tell you is like, yeah. uh, actually, I'm not feeling well. Uh, from the morning, I'm like a bit, I oh. went out for a medical emergency, but I know I have promised. So I gave the best out of me. And also I don't have my computer with me. It's my friend's computer. So I had to do some struggling a lot to get this thing working, but yeah, hope everything went well yeah. and hope everyone is happy as well. Right. As well, uh, the way you uh, took the last session and today you took it. So uh, it's really um, thankful to you. And it's really nice of you that you took I know from last days you are suffering from uh, suffering from few things and uh, your machine was not working and then you fixed, uh, arranged this one. This is really amazing. Thank you so much uh, for this, uh, Praveen. And all those people, those who have joined us, 
they can go to the uh, zubis assessment platform that is assess.zubis.io and did you and- did you manage to add more questions from the clues i gave you today in the in yes, the session sure. yeah sure 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 i already uh, did this and okay great more, yeah, sure. sorry okay. i was not able to give more on that part but uh, yeah it was like completely unplanned and this is how an unplanned session of mine looks like no but it was it, it you can say it unplanned but it was really well and it's uh, uh, well, thank you very well uh, gone so uh, thankful to you right so if anyone would like to all those people who have joined us they can uh, earn their certificate by going to the other to be other friend platform they can take the node js uh, assessment and after that uh, clearing the assessment they can get the certificate right and uh, that's the basic uh, like uh, uh, it's necessary like if if you are attending any session if you are attending any uh, any session not of the zubi if any session you are attending it's necessary to implement that particular knowledge somewhere maybe you can write a blog maybe you can go somewhere and read about that more particular things so it's necessary keep learning keep working it's in this lockdown one one thing which i would like to say everyone is like uh, see this is now available in uh, youtube and you can actually go back and forth and check things out at it and even if the chat reply is not available at the moment i have actually read out the questions to answer the questions so in that way it is easy for people who do not have the chat access but what i would pr- personally prefer you all doing is please go ahead use this video as a reference and try it out i also gave you the reference documentation link as well and if you need some help in setting up your computer you have the link for my blog as well so all you need to put us praveen dev environment and you could find the development environment that i personally use i'm not like gonna say like you have to use this for your best thing but this worked out for me so i feel that it will work out for a lot of people so feel free to like change anything which you would like to and uh, my best advice is try doing something unless you see there are like different people see i'm i'm not the only person who is doing these kind of like training uh, sessions and stuff like that but there are hundreds of people who are doing it and i'm not something uh, very diffi- different or dif- um, very interesting or something like that there are like so many better people out than me i have a lot of people to look up to the only thing which i personally request you to do is after whether it is me or others once you learn something try to implement it every single time so that that way it always stays with you and uh, that's the that's the key quality for getting it working so that's that's what i would say that's what i that's what i it feels happy to me and if possible send me your um uh, thing so do you want to like take a quick screenshot and put a um this is what i did and uh, and uh, this is what i learned and this is my first creation you can put it on your linkedin saying like yeah this is my first hello world application i learned something new that would be an inspiration to a lot of people so maybe that's a good way of going taking it forward yeah sure probably we going to do this we going to i i took the screenshot now we going to put it on the linkedin right So we gonna do it. <laughs> Thank you so much thanks, for your valuable advice. Thanks, Thank you so much for your right. valuable advice to the uh, participants, to all the attendees. Let's uh, meet all. Of, let's. I will meet you all. All of you in our community group on Telegram. Let's come over here. If you have any any kind of queries, please DM me. If you have any kind of uh, queries related, any kind of query which have been un- unsolved, right? Left unsolved. So you can you guys can directly DM to Pravin as well. He's in our community group. So just feel free to. fingers out and uh, is this is <laughs> once one shout out to my youtube channel please yeah, how please subscribe to uh, pravin's uh, uh, youtube channel check out his website he's he very well maintained his own portfolio website that was amazing with complete well well maintained document so please subscribe to his channel please subscribe to zubi and thank you for joining us we are coming up with more technical sessions and technical workshops with you